All right. Um, so this is Midnight Podcast again here? with uh, Yesik and Solid Snake. What's up? Hi. I just wanted to uh, hear Solid Snake. It's actually Vapid again. How's it going, Vapid? Uh, it's going. Just got off work. I, I was wondering where oh, you were I'm at. working on an announcement trailer, actually, uh, which I forgot to tell you guys about, I think. Um, next week, like Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to be fucking streaming Dragon's Lair, the bane of my fucking childhood. Dragons? What? <laughs> Uh-oh. Dragon's, not Dragon's Lair. Lair. Oh, I, I thought yeah. you just said Dragon's. I was like, what? <laughs> Dragon's Lair. That one in Space Ace fucking killed me when I was a kid, and I want to beat it now. Oh, man. Okay, so let's see. One, four, six, nine... Oh, wait, we're, we're still in the podcast. So bring up subjects. Okay, uh, games of the week, then. We'll start with Vapid. Uh, don't starve on Haunting Ground, still. All right, uh, moving on to Yesik. Um, Reyes. Same. Rus. 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 Rus, yeah, it was Rus. Not much in the way of games. Well, that's because we've just been completely enticed by this amazing game. Um, there is an indie game that you guys should check out. It's not out yet, but... um. The guy told me I could have a review copy for it. What was the name? Element 4L. Oh. Element 4L, what's it about? Uh, I think, I'm not exactly sure what the premise is, but I know you're like this, uh, this thing. Here, I'm just going to read you the description because I'm terrible. <laughs> Element 4L is a moody and experimental platform game with a strong focus on flow and smooth gameplay wrapped in an exceptional soundtrack by Mindtree, which the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. Uh, you control the state of your character, like the actual like physical state, so you can change into uh, a solid or a liquid or a gaseous state, whatever. Uh, to find your way through a dreamy underworld, your only hindrances are nature and the sun. It takes a different experimental approach to classic plat. I'm not going to go through the rest of that, but it's it looks really yeah, cool. It's, it's pretty awesome, and this I don't know if you're listening to the sound on it, but that soundtrack is awesome. Yeah, it um, sounds good too. I know. I am actually not watching the ad right now. To be honest, I'm reading through my comment. I've been um because of Roos and because they gave me early access and because I've recorded a bunch, I've been getting a hundred subs a day for the last two days. And I've gotten That's I've gotten fun. one in the past three days that I've posted videos on it. Uh I'm pretty psyched about hey, that. Hey, I got I got another one now, so that's two. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, was that was that your only game of the week, Isaac? Um, well, to be honest, I played some Isaac as well, but there's a week doesn't go by where I don't play Isaac. Yeah. Where does it tell you in your Steam what, what you've been playing? Uh, you have I, to click oh, on I your profile, them. and then on the right, it'll say gameplay stats, and then just look at view and search all however many games you have. And it should tell you, it should give you a list for recently played, and it's the last two weeks. Um, I also had a kind of a LAN party the other night. It wasn't really a LAN party because we all played online, but we were all in the, we were in the same room for Borderlands 2. How'd that go? It was great. Um, if none of you have played Borderlands 2 or if you were turned off by Borderlands 1, it's basically they took away, I love Borderlands yeah, 1 how, as well. How could they took be away everything turned away by Borderlands 1. Um, because it was dry. It was incredibly dry. There was no story. There was no interaction with characters yeah, it was beyond like the a, first. That's true, but it was so video fun. at the beginning and a video at the end. Yeah, and, and basically, it was so dry and there was so little interaction with characters that if you didn't play multiplayer with people in the same room, there was really no point in playing because it was so well, that's boring. How I feel about yeah. every game with multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, this one there's like tons of comedy. Every character interacts, has dialogues, voice acting, so it's so much better. Yeah, it was a pretty good game. I actually didn't get to uh, play it much. I've told this story before on the podcast, but I'm gonna tell it to you guys because I don't think either one of you two know it. So the game came out. I think it was 12 days before my birthday, and so uh, my girlfriend pre-ordered it for me and everything for PC uh, from Amazon. And then she had to cancel the order, and she ordered it from GameStop, but then she either ordered the wrong one, she ordered it for Xbox, or they gave us the Xbox copy. And uh, so I played it once, because I have an Xbox, and then I never played my Xbox again, because I hate Xbox. Yeah, okay. Fair. I, I just like Xbox as well. Oh, man. Um, 
Yeah, uh, other than that, I played some Don't Starve, I guess. I, I always forget to mention my Let's Play games. Don't Starve. Can we hear you say Don't Starve in Snake's voice? Don't Starve. <laughs> awesome. Didn't you have to eat in Snake Eater? I can't remember. Um, You had to mm, eat in the yes. first couple, I oh, think. Oh, you did? They actually had, like, a hunting yeah. mechanic. Yeah, you had, to, uh, you had to eat. I don't remember that in either one of the other two. Oh, well, I didn't... It was only in Snake Eater. Oh, okay. Oh, it was only in Snake Eater? Okay. Only in Snake Eater. And it was just uh, to regain health, if I recall correctly. Instead yes. of rations, you had you had snakes and stuff. <laughs> Which was uh, hilarious. You'd just, like, shoot down a snake in the woods and just, like, shove it into your yep. mouth. Yeah. Awesome. So you're done with your games of the week, then? Yeah, done with my games okay. of the week. Uh, as I was saying how much I hate my Xbox, I finally got Fez for PC, and, uh, I, I really like that game. Um, I, I don't, I'm not gonna talk about it, cause I don't wanna, cause it'll bore everybody. Uh, apparently I played more Bioshock Infinite, but I don't even remember it. Um, I feel like somebody came over and played my computer, because I don't remember playing quite a few of these games. Like, it's... Where did all this porn come from? Where? Uh, my hard drive's full of it. Okay, anyway. I did not play Skyrim, despite what it says. Uh, I played Limbo again, because that's an amazing game. The Double Fine Humble Bundle came out uh, within the past week, I think. Yes, I do remember that. So I bought that, so I got Brutal Legend, Costume Quest, uh, all those other games. Um, Apparently... I played like 20 minutes of that stacking game. I love that stacking game. I I love the mechanics in it, but... Um, when I, I bought it on Xbox a long time ago, back when it first came out, but I, I couldn't really get through it because I'm a completionist and I didn't have a guide right in front of me. Um, of course I try to finish stuff like on my own, but like there was stuff that I was stumped on and I needed a guide, but I didn't have one. So I just had to stop playing, but I'm going to play through it one of these days. Huh. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, in other news, here's a link. You guys don't get to hear about it. There's a game giving away press copies. It's called Yog or The Yog, which I, I think from the art, it looks kind of cool. I had never heard of it, but I just saw it on Twitter. They're like, hey, YouTubers. Wait, well, what is it? The Yog. What is up with that weird effect in uh, features? Oh, man, this art <laughs> looks amazing. I know it does. Um, A sense of impending oh goodness, doom. I want this. And it's all crazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure about this, but if it might be actually a Lovecraftian game, because if you don't know, one of the old ones is actually called Yog Soloth. Yeah. So uh, it, it could very much be a Lovecraftian jaunt. I'm definitely. And there's, like a, there's a lot of like sciency things. Multiplayer. A review copy of that. That'll be. I'm probably definitely. awesome. Um, I'm actually gonna do that as soon as the podcast is done. Uh, what else have I been playing this week? I don't think I've really played anything else, um, other than Rius, which we already talked about that, sort of, um, and the Double Fine games and Fez. Uh, I I think that's all I've played, really. Um, yep, looking at all my lists of stuff that's not on Steam. So, talking about Steam, uh, they started their new trading card thing, which, uh, I think, out of us, only Vapid is a member of it so far. I'm a member. Are you a member of the group or the actual uh, beta? The actual oh, beta. See, I haven't gotten an invite to it do you, yet. Do you want an invite? Yes, I do. Do you want one? Yeah, okay, they're I'll slowly accepting people into the uh, the beta. I'll send it your way. They they give you three invites if you um if you have if you get in. So. That's pretty convenient. Yeah. So pretty much it catches virally. So there was one thing I, I like the idea of a trading card thing. It kind of makes me think of the whole hats thing. But when it really comes down to it, I was reading some of the stuff that uh, trading cards can do for you. Like, all of the level ups, uh, I think it leads to just kind of more pointless stuff, like look at my E-Peen. But uh, one thing that really stood out when I was reading about it is you can increase your friends list if you get enough crap. Huh. You can also get coupons, which is kind of cool. Oh, I didn't know about the, about that. Yeah. Um, basically, what I think about it is... It's kind of cool. Even the uh, look at my look at my electronic penis. Let me show you my e cock. Um, also, kind of cool because anything that increases the community in, within Steam to me is a good thing. 
because Steam is kind of missing out on like a grand opportunity to be like one of the biggest social media outlets on the face of the planet. I know I like it more than Facebook. Like right now, if I go to the store, I can actually see that there are 5 million people currently logged into Steam and it rarely drops below 3 million. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's really high numbers for a social media outlet. So anything that makes it closer to that is actually really cool. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, have any of you actually got any trading cards yet? Oh, yeah. I only, only have, have the them. Wilson one. I have the um, fire starter from Don't Starve. How do you get them? How do you unlock them? Where I, I think I, it's I, just the more time you spend no in idea. the game, it'll like give you a random one, kind of like discovering stuff in Team Fortress. Ah, uh, I see. That, that's what I read. Because I know it says it says how many drops you have per game. It's like I think I have three drops left, so I can get three more cards. But I don't know how to unlock them. I don't. I didn't know if you had to complete a certain action or something. Yeah, I think you just. How do you? How do you actually get to your inventory of cards? Uh, uh, profile it... badges. Okay, profile badges. So I'm gonna try to get all of them, even though I don't own Half Life on PC. I probably won't even try to get the Dota ones. I don't play Dota. I'll just grab them here and there and, you know, see what see what's what. Is Dota still in beta? Um, Dota in beta? I, I don't actually know, to be honest with you. <laughs> who, who knows about Dota anymore? Apparently, I only have two drops remaining in Don't Starve, even though I've only gotten one. And it does actually tell you how to get like if I look at the badges it tells me how to get 100 XP which is my torch just ran out never mind I have no idea how this works okay well yeah um that was a short topic I, I suppose unless you guys want to talk more about it I don't think there's much to talk about on it no not really not that I can think of at the moment I think they should be a bit more clear on how you get a drop yeah like it, I actually had to search how to whatever uh next topic uh, unless you guys want to talk, uh, whatever. No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep EA going. EA puts an end to its online pass program. Yay! Oh God, I just thought of another topic that's going to come up. <laughs> okay. Um... That one actually interested the Rios devs, and they thought about staying just for that one topic, or at least they oh. acted. I don't know. Whatever. So EA online pass. Um, Dad. To be honest, I can couldn't care less. Because you don't buy EA um... games. My EA, I'm I'm currently, I'm currently, what's it called again? It's not Bogart, that's the opposite. I'm currently not Boycott. buying Boycott. I'm all currently boycotting EA games as well because they're fucking douchebags. Yeah, I am too. After, there was a game that came out recently. No, it wasn't SimCity. Uh, there was some game that came out within the past year that just made me completely boycott them. What is this um, online Pass. Basically, what, you had like... to have this code, this one-time use code, to oh. um, not not just play the game, but I mean like play any sort of multiplayer I... aspect of it. Yeah, get DLC. I know what you're yeah. talking about. I borrowed my, was it Battlefield? I think it might have been Battlefield. I borrowed my brother's copy of Battlefield uh, quite some time ago, and uh, <clears throat> there wasn't a or whatever game it was. There wasn't. Um, a code or there was a code in it that he had already uh, used and I couldn't play a certain section of the game because of it. Fuck that, that shit. Is Whoa, the online you mean the, uh, was, it, was it the online section or the actual campaign? So, um, I, I have no idea. It, it was so long if ago. If they cut out like pieces it was the of the um, campaign, that would be crazy. No, 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 no. It's the online section. It was section. probably just the online section. But uh, whatever game it was, I couldn't play the online of it. And then um, a while later later or before um he he buys games straight up from the uh the store he goes to GameStop and purchases the games and he bought like a used game or something and he couldn't play the online section because the game itself didn't come with the code i think it might have been prototype it might have been yeah, prototype that's, that's, too that's what they um that's what online passes are yeah okay yeah now fuck i that. can understand yeah. um why they're doing that because they want to sort of uh prevent used sales they want to get all their money uh they don't want it to go to gamestop or whatever but that's not um, really going to change used game bucks. sales and gamestop is still going to charge 55 dollars. so for those people that are getting charged 55 dollars, still don't be a douchebag to them just because you want your money uh and 
they're still paying for the game, so you should still let them play it. Well, games cost $60. Um, the, uh, the average minimum wage in, in California is, I think, eight fifty. People work uh, part-time jobs. They get about mm, $300, $400 every two weeks. And uh, in order to support yourself paying all your bills and all that, $60 is quite the chunk of change. Yeah, it is. Um, so, you know, buying a used game is – it's it's like that whole thing we talked about. I think we talked about it last time or something um, or one of the other times is uh, basically, you know, you're not – you don't make enough money to be able to play video games. So fuck off. Yeah, well, you know, um, the thing is I think – I think if it was ever taken to court by somebody who had enough money to actually sue EA, it would come out on the side of the people because the locking off something that you have sold because you are buying yeah. the game. You are this is your piece of game now. You can do what you want with it. You can make a copy of it. It is legal to make a copy of any piece of software for your own personal use. Did you know yeah. that? And yeah. you can't even do that anymore. So I, was I think distracted. What was it? I think um, um you're it's illegal to make a cop or it's legal to make one copy of any piece of software you own for personal use. And I think that companies are breaking these laws left, right, and center because I can't make a copy of Photoshop for my own personal use. Like if I if I had a copy and I wanted to make one, I, if I put it in my yeah, disk tray and tried to, to buy install it on a different computer. license for your next computer. Yeah. But that's a copy for my personal use. So these companies are breaking laws wholesale. And the ability to resell something you bought is also a right that you have because it's now your possession. Well, I think the thing is, is it, I know this is still kind of dumb that you have to go through uh, this leap to get it. But I think if you contact them and give them the CD key and everything, that they'll allow you to redo it. But you shouldn't have to do that. No. No, you shouldn't. Not at all. It was like my girlfriend's uh, antivirus – well, her computer crashed, and then she had to contact her antivirus people to – because she pays for her antivirus. And she uh, had to contact them to get them to re-allow her to download it and all this mess, and that was just dumb. May I ask why she buys her antivirus? Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> not, not while we're recording. <laughs> no we're bites, man. No we're bites. Um – all right, so where were we? Oh, yeah, online pass. Uh, so EA, I'm just going to go ahead and get this out because we talk about it in every single podcast. EA and Activision, bunch of bags of dicks. There we go. Yeah, pretty much every time there's something to talk about, it ends up talking about yeah, EA. Yeah, it's, it's a quota that I have Dick to fill bags. in every single one of these podcasts. I have to say I hate EA and I ha hate Activision. It has to be said at least once in every podcast. Otherwise, I'll quit. Uh, I hate Activision less than EA. I'm not currently boycotting them, at least. Uh, it's not necessarily Activision that I hate. It's just Bobby Kotick. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, since he's sort of the head of Activision, whatever. Um, didn't, didn't, yeah. uh, didn't Double Fine used to have Activision as publishers? I don't actually know. I think they did. Yeah. Anyways, I, I think that's it for that subject. All right. Um, we're not gonna hit the big. Speaking of Double Fine, their newest game looks really good. Oh, that good. does look good. I really love the art. Uh, Broken Age—that's the name of it, right? I think I think, so. I think yeah. it's gonna be like twenty dollars. They're yeah, they're crowdfunding it, aren't yeah. they? It's already crowdfunded. Yeah. Is it point and click adventure? Uh, I think so. Or is it so. just adventure in general? Yeah. I, I just have more than enough point and click games. I don't think I can ever get enough point and clicks. I. I you would. Daedalic does some really good ones. Daedalic Entertainment? To be honest, I actually... Daedalic is one of the companies I kind of have a problem with. Um, not in a huge Which way. company is that? What, what have they done? Daedalic. Um, well, they haven't done anything specifically. Okay, I, I just can't do a review of their games or play their games or do a feature of their games because they're a pain in the dick to record. Like, to, you, you get, to get anywhere takes forever. The puzzles are entirely arbitrary. It's like almost as bad as um, as what's it called? Uh, the yeah, Disc World, and the Harvey Disc World puzzle games. Really freaking hard. I'm, I'm still yeah. confused about who we're talking about. But it's a it's a, a company that makes point and click adventures. There was a really a really interesting one called Edna and Harvey, and they made um, a second one, uh, and 
It was among my first Let's Plays, and while I, it was really good, it was really hard to play. And um, not only that, but I seem to get slow down on any computer I ever play their games on. I didn't have so that these problem. are the guys that did Deponia. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Deponia 2 was the one that gave me all the troubles, and I just stopped even caring about their games. I'm really after sad that. that you guys are complaining about them. I've never played any of their games, but the way I, Deponia looks, I want them. to. Um, uh, look up uh, the Night of the yeah, Rabbit. I just, I just saw a screenshot of that. Yep. That Again, I'd like to clarify, I, I don't it. dislike the company. I just It's too much of a pain in the ass for me to ever care about making the effort. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel that way about a lot of the games that are like uh, just... I don't know. Like I've said it before, I'm like ridiculously casual now, and I would much rather just sit back and relax and play a game and not, you know, rip my hair out in frustration, uh, which seems to happen a lot um, with the point and clicks as well as uh, survival horror. By the way, Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes, awesome game. It was fantastic. <laughs> that was I truly fantastic. Hey guys, um. I'm I'm really sorry, but I have to go away from the keyboard for like two seconds. Something just happened. I'm really sorry. Uh, yes, I can know the right. next topic. So if uh, do I? Well, oh once yeah, I do. You guys are done talking about whatever. You can uh, segue into that. I'm really sorry for having to leave. Oh, it's all right. I have the next topic. Oh God. Um, are we done the with... recording though? You could stop the recording and say I'll be right back. Eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anything else about pointing click adventures in general? Since mm. we're on the subject. I I just dislike the fact that they're so uh, obtuse. Yeah, you know, like the Edna and Harvey did a really good job uh, with the space bar, uh, which I didn't even use. I forgot it was even there. But if you hit the space bar, it shows you what what on the screen can be interacted with, and um, I really actually, liked that. Actually, a good thing that Edna and Harvey did really well is it had its own surreal type of logic built into how yeah twisted it was yeah once you yeah. once you get in line with the way things are supposed to be everything becomes just a little bit easier but things like um deponia i find that the they they work on real world logic in a really silly way that doesn't make any sense i see so you know it makes sense in edna and harvey that i would Spoilers: Kill a boy with ants and honeys. Yeah, and to to get down a well that makes I'm sense, back. but it doesn't make sense in Deponia that I would tie myself to a giant saw blade with a two somehow using a toothbrush to get like something out of a under a fridge and it just. Wait, we're still talking steps, about Deponia. Gotcha. The steps don't make any so. sense. Yeah, like um, uh, what is it? Um, the the most I was trying to think of the most recent uh, point and click that I played. Uh, it was. It's not a send. It's not really a point and click, but Anna. Uh, I did a let's play of it a while ago, and it was absolutely horrible and a headache to play. But they did the extended edition, and um, the first stream that I did was of Anna, the extended edition, and I got literally nowhere because the the logic that they use is so ridiculous. But then they'll switch it up all of a sudden, like you know. You have to use an axe to chop this wood. Well, why did I just put, like, baby's blood on an eyeball and stick it to the wall? <laughs> how does that make sense? How, how does See, chopping this wood with an axe and sticking baby's blood on an eyeball to a wall, how do those things coexist in the same that's universe? That's why I you know just can't I mean? let's play any of that. But I, I would love to mm -hmm. because I love some of their games. I'm looking at their full game list right now. Gemini Roo, uh, Tales of Monkey Island, <laughs> however you want to pronounce Machinarium or Machinarium. I know there's Machinarium. Yeah, I know that like people will probably kill me for pronouncing it. How they it, don't pronounce it's, it. It's it's Machinarium. It's um, yeah. If there's an I, if there's a, if there's a vowel after a ch, it's sh. So to hell with anyone who says Machinarium. Why are we being quiet? Um, no, oh, I was just explaining. No. But anyways, the thing I think with point and click adventures is I actually think there's no reason for them anymore because you can just as easily make a puzzle-based adventure game that is not point-and-click, and it's a lot less annoying to play. Yeah. True, but I think, like, in like in the case of Edna and Harvey, um, the 
art style really lent itself well to the Yeah, that, that well seems a big thing the, for the Daedalic, click. or however you're going to pronounce it, is uh, their art style and like, every single one of their games is uh, very unique. Yeah. It's really good looking as well. To, to be honest, I think it looks a bit like um, Penny Arcade, so I'm not too impressed. Ah. <laughs> You know Penny Arcade. I, yeah, was of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm actually really disappointed. Um, this is old, an old title. The third uh, chapter of the Penny Arcade games. I'm I was kind of disappointed that they stepped away from what they were doing to do, the uh, RPG kind of the the other thing that they're doing now, as opposed to they, how the how they're doing it now. They had to give it to another company. I know, and I'm I was fairly disappointed with that. I mean, it was it was still cool and all, I guess, but I just really liked it a lot more before. Yeah, no, I I liked it a lot more too. But um, they didn't. It wasn't money. They didn't know. They weren't making the profit in order to fund it because you know how much Penny Arcade has blown up. Pax sent Pax Prime. Yeah. Anyone? Like I don't even understand the route you take from being an online comic to being the most major gaming festival on the face of the planet. I don't understand the path. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make I guess, sense. I guess how it, they just, one year they're like, all right, we're hosting this game thing and we're inviting really famous people. I guess. I don't know. But seriously, it, Penny Arcade confuses me. I think it just wasn't enough. It was a lost, it would have been a lost cost fallacy for them to continue. Yeah. It cost more to develop than they were really making, and it cost more man hours to develop than they had time to invest. I just wish that the developers they had handed it off to it uh, tried to at least make it similar to what it was. Yeah, I, I can see that though. I'm, I'm not saying what <laughs> those guys did was bad though. I just miss what it was. I, no, I, I do understand. I do understand. I, I'm just talking about why it happened. Yeah. I think yeah. there need to be uh, more games that have those kind of graphics like sort of uh like the penny arcade ones yeah. i did enjoy them quite a bit yeah. and i enjoyed the humor in them too yeah. i'm not actually a fan of um penny arcade in terms of a comic but the games were I've awesome actually never even i've read like a comic like six years ago or i don't know a long time ago and uh i i just never get into web comics at all you know lurkin, lurkin i would McCulkin. buy the crap out of a vg cats game oh vg cats i, do, was, I <laughs> did like vg cats a little bit yeah, I, I enjoyed VG Cats when I was like 14, 15. That was a good time. But I just could never get into webcomics, except for uh, Lurkin McClurkin's new webcomic. Now I'm going to have to link so much stuff. Because uh, I just... Whatever. Uh, but he has a, a webcomic that's pretty interesting. It's about an assassin. It's pretty interesting. So I hate to... um, I hate to bring this up in the middle of podcast, but we're going to... I'm assuming we're going to post the podcast and the interview separately. Uh... I, I wasn't sense, originally going to because I didn't think we were going to go as long as we did, but since we did go as long as we did, it is going to be separate. Yeah, I thought so. Because it's it's just we had a developer's interview, and now we're doing the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Nathan Explosion. Next. Gray Fox. PMCs. Micro machines, nano machines, nano micro machines. <laughs> micro machines. Uh, micro that, you mean machines like you mean like those little the toys way. that are? <laughs> are you talking about little cars yes. now? Should we talk about this? Anyways, subject, podcast. subject, topic. All right, next topic. Unless we're. Uh... Oh God, sorry. Speaking of toy cars, Hot Wheels made a glow in the dark Camaro. Oh, like a full size one. Since we're actually talking about um, cars here, I'm gonna go on this topic. Um, there was this something that something, just wait till I pull it up. Okay, uh, apparently Costco UK is selling a full-sized F1 simulator for 90,000 pounds, and it's like an actual computer inside of an F1 racer. Okay, I've also got to show you guys this, you might have to link it in the descriptions, Glow in the Dark Camaro. It is amazing. Like I'm not a big car fan, but they 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 actually made this. <laughs> you know, people some people have recently defended Justin Bieber and his everything to me, and I have generally torn them apart. But if he had bought this instead of a Chrome Porsche, I would have been more impressed. A glow in the dark. 
I'd yeah. buy a glow in the dark car. I think I would too. Like nobody would try to hit you, even if they were drunk. Yeah, they would it, think that you're like an alien or something. It'd be. I think, it would, much be, I think it would actually be probably safe. be illegal. Be illegal. Yeah, I don't well, think at least illegal. here, you know, if your car is fucking this bright green glowing mess, I don't think you could distract any, other drivers. I don't think there is any law that would say that it's illegal. I'm pretty sure because there would it, because be it, one because shortly. it only it only glows like you've seen glow in the dark shit. Yeah, it it only glows a in the dark and b it doesn't glow that brightly. It doesn't like it fucking shines in your eyes. It's just visible, really. Yeah, probably. So I'd say get it's a even. car covered in reflective tape. There we go. I'm saying I'm saying it could be um a safety feature even. I can't stop looking oh, at yeah, the probably. art for the yog. I know it's amazing, isn't it? That is so cool. Anyways, we should continue talking about video games. Um, should we move on to the next subject? Uh, just so that we can delay a little bit longer, we're going to talk about Tryon getting hit by massive layoffs. That's the developers of um, Defiance and what was that other MMO that everybody said was like just like Vanilla WoW? I don't uh, know. Not Terra, but there was another one. Aeon? No, Aeon was before that. Uh... Well, then I have no idea. Rift. That, that was it. Uh, so the devs of Defiant, Defiance and Rift. And I read some. I read a, t a comment that somebody said a big thing about why all these MMO developers uh, getting hit with layoffs is because uh, it doesn't really matter how successful an MMO is, but it takes a lot more people to make an MMO than it does to keep it going. Well, to be honest, you're actually just... Um stating a problem in the video game industry in general and it's a problem that most of the employees just know and deal with um after a game's done the game's done <laughs> every time a game finishes a few months later there are going to be massive layoffs it's a project ba it's like um yeah if there's like no other projects in the studio they're gonna you know they're either gonna kick them to the curb or they're gonna you know move them to the new project it's like working as an architect. There's a lot of unemployed architects. And, you know, they might occasionally get a commission and make, like, a huge amount of money, like $50 million. But then they don't work for years at a time. I'm so glad to not be part of uh, the mainstream gaming thing. But uh, to be honest, I, I don't really think you should feel too sorry for them. If they're game developers and if they are programmers specifically... It is incredibly easy to get a job. That's that's a it's a really intensive four year degree. Well, that's actually what I'm I, uh, in college for is uh, computer science. So, well, there we go. You know, yeah. Even even though I'm doing art as opposed to the actual programming in my game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so layoffs. All right, I guess we'll move to the big topic, the one that everybody's been waiting for, even though they don't know what it is. Although they probably know what it is because you even posted a video yeah. about it. Uh, Nintendo puts at least 100 Let's Players out of a job, although that's just the number that I used. That's, so. that's, that's the inflammatory post. Yeah, that I, that I posted. <laughs> I, think it, I think that post How is about? just about dead now, though. How many upvotes did it end up getting? I haven't even been watching. 64 cool. upvotes on Reddit. I probably have like 10 billion messages. No, I don't actually. Good. They stopped bothering me. I thought, if I, sh I thought if I shut up enough... That people would eventually start defending me, and I would have to—I could stop posting. Yeah, some some of the people in those comments. Uh, there was one guy that actually didn't even know that there's a community for Let's Players. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um. To be honest, I think that people. Okay, we haven't even brought up the subject. Bring up the subject. Okay, so basically, Nintendo is stealing all the ad revenue for any videos that have Nintendo in them. I think stealing um, might be a strong word. No, nope, there's no. Um, um, I would like to quote. Uh, it was quoted at me actually as a counter argument, but it's stupid. Um, quote to you a part of the free the um, fair use act. And by the way, the fair use act is an act passed so that people could make money off their reviews and coverage of events. So I would like to very quickly state that. And then I will read you the actual quote. I have to grab it off of Reddit. Yeah, I know um, they started uh, claiming 
videos of uh, reviewers they invited to um, look at their stuff and make videos of their stuff. And then they, they claimed it on YouTube so that they can take the ad revenue from that. And that's pretty damn scummy. Well, um, the actual quote I'm looking for is, um, in fair use, you can use by reproduction in copies or phone records or by any other means specified by that section for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, and teaching. So that's the Fair Use Act. That's basically what it is. You can use it for any of those things that I just named. Comment being, of course, shorthand for commentary. News reporting being for review. Teaching being for walkthroughs. So they are stealing. Just outright. Okay. Okay. I was just... Uh... Ever since I started Let's Playing, the the question of fair use has always been uh, brought up in the forums that that I visited, you know, and, and the answer was always it's uh, kind of a gray area. It's a legal gray area and nobody knows what's going on and nobody it's knows gray, this and nobody knows that. It's a gray so, area because these companies have a lot of money to lobby. Do you know what copyright used to be for? So, copyright, copyright used to be so that if you made a movie... I wouldn't make a hundred copies of those movies and resell it. I got you. That's what copyright used to be. Now copyright is if you use my thing in any way at all, yeah. then I can fucking come down on your ass, which is not what it was supposed to be. That doesn't protect the people. That just protects the money of the big industries who are making way too much money to begin with. Wait, am I so going to get this, in trouble because of my voice? This, <laughs> <laughs> yep, now so, I won't so be this, able to uh, monetize my videos. Thanks, Vapid. So uh, this it's Konami, is, they're cool. <laughs> yeah, it's true, they are. So this is the last 50 years of law in terms of copyright have turned copyright into this huge monstrosity that it was never meant to be. The cool thing, um, Fair use. Man no. Manuel from uh, Abbey Games that actually sent me this Reddit post that uh, had a li like a huge list of devs that uh, lists whether they're cool with uh, monetizing videos or not. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, um, <laughs> the PR the PR company who gives me a lot of games and who has a rep for me has been having a field day with it. They're like, hey, you can play videos of any of our stuff. Seriously, <laughs> we'll send you the games for free. <laughs> They've just been on remember, Twitter constantly. <laughs> do you remember Closure? Closure? Uh, the game no. Closure? Um, well, the, the developer, Tyler Glail, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, he posted the other day on Twitter... Is uh, any angry LPers, you know, want to play some games and earn money for them? I'll give you some codes for my game. So I, uh, I emailed him, and he, he's pretty lighthearted about it. He's like, "Hey, dude, as long as people are playing my game, I don't really care." By the way, um, I just posted in the chat the exact quote, and this is from the actual law itself. This is a I have trick. read that. Yeah, sort of talking so. about what um Vapid was saying about uh. As long as people are playing my game. I know that uh, th this is sort of different, but um, I honestly don't care if people are going to pirate my game once it's out because I want people to play it. But if they have the means to pay for it, I do want them to pay for it. But if there's some guy that's like, hey, I can't afford your game or whatever, uh, then I would totally just give him a free copy just because I want people yeah, to play we, it. We talked about that a while ago, how, uh, you know... Um, both Jessica and I talked about it, how, uh, you know, you just can't afford to buy games, but you want to play them. And Jessica said he went back and uh, paid for them after the fact. Post-mortem. Yeah, post-mortem. Yeah. Um, I have pretty much at this point, unless I'm forgetting one, paid for every game that I pirated. And it's because I was a kid. I had no money. I could not invest $60 in a game. I know you'll all probably exactly. call BS on this, but I actually don't think I've ever pirated a game. I, I would don't call BS on that. That's perfectly reasonable. I mean, obviously, I have stolen stuff, and I paid for it. Um, With jail time. <laughs> uh, but I don't think I ever actually pirated a game. I tried pirating Spore once, like, the day it came out. Um, and then I went and bought it, like, a week later. But I was, like, so young at the time and not eligible about computers. Uh, educated about computers, so I didn't actually know what I was doing. So I ended up just deleting all the spore files. 
Um, surprisingly enough, um, Spore may have been one of my first major pirated games as well. It, but I, but I actually and it was totally disappointing. I think what I what yeah, I, it was very disappointing. Think, I'm glad I pirated it. I think what really <laughs> caught my attention about it was um, when I saw the advertisements for it on TV. Is there there was like this huge uh, aura of mystery to it. I didn't really know what it was. I just kind of saw like Dude, this those ads were like so around. fantastical. It it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh. Although I got to admit, it was pretty fun to like design your favorite cartoon characters as monsters. Yeah, yeah. but I yeah. mean, the novelty quickly wears off. Yeah, and especially since the the late game was so convoluted, it like crap. was it <laughs> just wasn't worth it. To, like the the late game was so flimsily put together that you're like, eh, no, <laughs> yeah. gonna stop. There's no point in there's no point in all this work to go to the late game. Yeah. That's why I would once I got the space, I just quit and would start a new game. But, um, what the hell were we talking about? We were talking about friggin' Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're talking about uh, plans for so what I'm. What I'm seeing though on Twitter is that uh, you know the indie developers, they seem to realize far more that um, having people let's play your game, regardless of whether or not they're earning money off of it is, uh, you know, it's free advertisement. You have this one person who maybe you even gave a copy of your game, and they're showing it to their hundreds of thousands of, uh, you know, viewers. Yeah, it's and like I bought a, a... If two people buy your game because of that one person, that is profit. Yeah, it's I bought you know, stuff because of Yesik. Yeah, exactly. I know. Um, things, and I brought that up. I'm a small YouTuber. I have sold probably, judging from comments, about 50 Wii U's. 50. Nice. And they like, kind of you... suck. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just sold it on the merit of, you know, there'll probably be games eventually and Monster Hunter's here. And people are like, yeah, I like you. I'm going to buy that's a Wii U. Exactly that's exactly what happened with me. And That's a, a fair amount of profit. I'm just so pissed. I, I found something interesting about that list that we were talking about with all the developers. The only ones that have no on there are um, Microsoft and Nintendo. Yeah, and you know, even Bag even EB, even EB is like, yeah, we can do that. Who, EB? And they're the scumbags of the fucking world. Yeah, EB. Who's that? Or is that the actual name? EB Games. E EA Games. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, EB used to be GameStop. I always get those mixed yeah, up. Yeah, all you have to do is just email them and ask them, and like they'll probably say yes. And uh, like I don't think of an instance where they'd say no, but uh, and then they'll be like, sure, and then you have permission. But like Microsoft and Nintendo are just flat out no. Well, to be honest, I've been boycotting Microsoft since day fucking one, mostly because I was a Sony fanboy. So that doesn't change much for me. Uh, at this point in the stage, I, I could. I would consider myself a Sony Sony fanboy as well. Yeah. Well, you, you know, PlayStation I 2... I just like games. PlayStation 2 was clearly like this the um, Super Nintendo of its generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like that. And do you know what's really baffling? And I've been quoted on this, and I'll quote myself on this. This move in a generation of systems where one of the systems is going to have built-in live streaming is fucking off the walls. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Right. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> you mean ridiculous as in, like, just kind of silly, right? Well, yeah, because, like, the fact that PlayStation 4 is going to have built-in live streaming clearly shows that they have looked up their mistakes and they've been like, okay, this was our problem with the last generation of consoles. Um, people couldn't share it. People couldn't record it very easily. Let's make it easier for everyone. And at the same time Sony's doing this, Nintendo claims all fucking games? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all well, videos? let's just say I... Sony's going to be coming out on top for quite some time now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, that's just really disappointing that both Nintendo and Microsoft... Big bag of dicks! Bag of dicks. Uh, pretty much an avalanche of dicks. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, oh, okay. A dick avalanche. Somebody animate this. A dick this. <laughs> Animate it and have, like, Sony, or, um, Microsoft and Nintendo just, like, falling down with the avalanche. Running away from the avalanche of dicks. <laughs> uh, wow. 
Of course, they'll have to yeah. uh, put it somewhere where that's allowed. Just just put it yeah, on Reddit um, and have it in SFW. There, there you, somebody will watch that on Reddit. You know, you could even do it really easily if you just blurred out all the dicks, so it would just be an avalanche of blurred that's out. That's true. But you could kind of still tell their dicks. Just make it a avalanche pink, of blur. Avala- uh, pink blurred out avalanche. Not literally pink, but skin color, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Flesh yeah. colored, flesh tone. Works for me. Okay, um, do we have another subject? Because I'm pretty sure um, we're not going to get any contrary opinions on the Nintendo thing. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking. Yeah. Um, let's let's try to brainstorm on some things that, w- like, why are people cool with this? Like, I. What do you mean? Like, there are people that are actually supportive of Nintendo for it. Like, what reasons well, I mean, do you think they're, they're actually supportive? They're generally, they're generally um, industry folk, um, and not... Uh, so far, um, I've only seen, like, one YouTuber defend them, and that's just, like, from a business perspective, saying that they have the right to, you know, claim their intellectual property. But, you know, the reasoning behind it... I. I have no idea because, like I said, I I think that YouTube is just free advertising for your to, game. To be, to be honest, the only like I I put a video up because I was pretty fucking passionate about it, and um the only person who really, well there were like two or three people defending. One had a good point, but the one person who threw the most hate down, then quickly complained that his comment being marked as spam meant that it was a violation of freedom of speech. So I think it's the "you America" type, ah, <laughs> because clearly this fucker doesn't understand what free speech is. It doesn't mean consequence-free speech, you asshole. And it doesn't mean the sites have to allow you to post your whatever you want wherever. This it is just true. means you can talk without being censored. I hate how all all, all that spam crap on YouTube. Makes yeah. me go through because I want to read it when it's, I when I see it marked as spam or downvoted a ton. It makes me it makes want you want to read it. it, and so I have to go to the trouble I've of had clicking a few, show comment. I've had a few, but generally, generally, I can't generally. Even speak. Generally, it's um some kind of spoiler. Like somebody will mark it as spam because it's some kind of a small spoiler uh, for the video. I don't know why people read the comments before watching the video, but see, that's regardless. not what it is at all on on mine. Mine's only been marked the only person that's been marked for spam on mine has been in Demis, but it's happened to him three times now and uh nice it, it's always on my podcasts too uh that like ah. you guys don't know this guy i don't think no uh yesik has met him once gavin you remember gavin uh he, he was talking about uh gnome something about gnomes for a long time or dwarf dwarf cast dwarf yes, fortress dwarf fortress fortress for a long yeah. time and uh like he sent me a banner the other day actually he did yeah. For your YouTube channel or Yeah. What what? Gavin yep. did? Yeah. Where's my YouTube banner? He's my friend. I don't know. <laughs> um I guess I don't really care. I did my own YouTube banner. I actually just uploaded it on there today. Uh Okay. Yeah, so now I've got that the uh, the banner that he sent me. It looks it looks pretty nice. Um I might change them out every one now and again cuz I always get bored with with things and a piece of fan art for my friggin' profile picture. It's pretty awesome. I um want to very quickly read this out to Vapid because the subject of comments brought me to this. And I've already sent it to you, Midnight, but I think this is hilarious. I got a comment today on part two of Monaco, and as you know, I'm a pretty big anti PewDiePie advocate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say the least. So I got this sentence. I like how Every buddy, two separate words, that does not like PewDiePie always call his fans idiot. No period. <laughs> so I was like, I like that too. We have so much in common. <laughs> I'm on I'm on push to talk right now, but just imagine that I'm like slow clapping. <laughs> so uh, I uh, I had to I had to go even further here. So I was like, also your focus on spelling and punctuation really does PewDiePie fans credit. I'm assuming that the it was artistic direction that led you to separate the word everybody, and that the lack of period makes us and the way the lack of period makes a sentence just trail off is spectacular. <laughs> it was pretty spectacular. Oh god, just Genius. that comment. I'm like, don't defend your intelligence. 
check your punctuation and spelling. If you're defending your own intelligence. Yeah, this is true. Dude, goddamn asshole. I'm anyway, sorry. I, I like that. <laughs> so, I guess that's sort of done for the Nintendo topic. Yes. So, boycotting Nintendo, yep. boycotting Microsoft. I love Sony. Um, I'm not saying that everyone should boycott them, but, you know, if you feel the same, go ahead. That's what I'm doing. Um, what games are you guys looking forward to? Right now? Yeah. Um, well, that one that I sent you a link Yog. to. Yog. Yog. Yeah, um, let's see. There's also a couple more, but I currently forget them. Me um, too. I've, I've really... Okay, apparently, um, Shovel, not Shovel Knight, um, Rogue Legacy, as uh, we talked about before, it was apparently ready to come out, like, the second it was greenlit, but now that they've had such a huge community response, they're like, we're gonna develop it more, so I, I'm not, I'm looking forward it's to that. It's not really though. a bad thing. Even though it's gonna be coming out in, like, three, four months now. No, it's a good thing, but, you know, impatience. Yeah. I am looking forward to Among the Sleep and Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair. Oh, I'm God. looking forward to... This is going to be our shortest podcast. Yeah, whatever. Good, because I have to pee. <laughs> yeah, I kind of need to piss, too. So do you guys want to uh, live stream Castle Crashers after this? Or are you guys... After this? Videos? I have work to uh, do. I have yeah, I've got to videos do. to make. Uh, what, what games am I looking forward to? Let's see. Not Marvel Heroes, that's for sure. Yeah, damn. <laughs> that game, I can't say anything. I'm actually looking it... forward to playing Metro Last Light, even though I didn't play Metro 2033. Oh, if you're new to the series, then it's probably going to be fine. Oh, good. I can actually, um, never mind. I'll talk about it later. Okay, so I'm looking forward to okay. Element 4L. I think I talked about that earlier. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to Yogg. Yogg! Yogg. Uh, I don't think there's any... Triple A games I'm looking forward to, honestly. No, um, well, I've pretty much given up the gun on Triple A gaming. Um, the only reason I'm still using the Wii U at all is I don't think I should punish Capcom for Nintendo's mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, actually, I did find that's... one. Remember Me looks uh, pretty interesting. Oh yeah, Remember Me, the the crazy one about yeah, memory. Yeah, pretty nice. Although it could just be a mindless action platformer with some good settings. Probably, Probably will be. But it still looks cool. That's true. <laughs> the only thing about all these games, the, the AAA games, is I just can't justify the price at all. Yeah. Something I'm going to be finished with in like three hours. Well, nah, you know well, what? Even, even $50 is, because uh, you know how most games, uh, when on yeah. PC, they cut down to 50 as opposed to 60 Even that's kind of high. I could justify 40 but... Even fifty is just a little too high. Even even forty yeah. is honestly a little too high. But I'm actually more willing to do forty than fifty. You know what's really awesome about Steam? What? If you have if a game comes out, let's say Borderlands two, and you're like, oh man, I really want to play it, but I, I guess I don't really want it. I don't want to play it sixty dollars. Yeah. You can just wait half a year, and it'll go on sale for ten bucks. That's very true. This is true. Steam is amazing. Yeah. I have to agree. And you know, it PC Master Race. PC Master Race. Well, a lot of people say um gaming on PC isn't affordable. It's the opposite. Yeah, it's way if, more if affordable you can, than console. If you hey, can invest especially if you can't afford games and easily have access to a web browser. I mean, yeah. and you know, it's you don't cheaper than anything good. else I know. You don't even need that great of a computer in order to run these games. Yeah. No, like, um, if you're go if you're going intense and want to run everything on high settings, you can probably do that for nine hundred bucks. Yep, I can run if, everything on ultra, and I spent fifteen hundred. Yeah, there we go. It's fairly easy. I can usually run um, everything on high, and I spent twelve hundred, or not high. I, you ultra. don't, you don't need to run everything on ultra. You can you could buy a functional seven hundred and fifty dollar PC. Yeah. That oh, we yeah. play all the well, games you want I mean, the difference to. between, you know, high and ultra is negligible. It's Yeah, a lot of people won't even notice. And, you know, exactly. in um in six or seven games, you'll probably make that price back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. And there's more games available, and there's more free games available, and there's more cheap games available, and there's, everything's better. Yeah, as opposed to 
Like, you'll go and try to buy an indie game on Xbox Live Arcade, and it's going to be $15 for the next eight years. Yeah. Not really eight, yeah. but it, it seriously it never won't, be, down. It won't go on sale until, until, like, three years since it's been out. So Let's not forget you have to buy Microsoft points. They're actually doing away with Ish. Microsoft points, or at least that's rumored. For the 360 or for the next Just Xbox? in general, like... Yeah. Ah, gotcha. and, and I think that's happening soon. So they're probably doing some big. They, they have did it with their like games on demand. You could yeah. just put in your credit card information and buy straight up buy the, the game. I think the only problem with that though was uh, they would charge tax on that. I think <laughs> as opposed to if you paid nice. with Microsoft points, then they didn't. But they charge tax on the Microsoft. No, points. you don't. No, have yeah, to pay they charge tax at all with Microsoft points, or at least I never did. No, I mean like. If you buy them at a store, no, see, I, you I, have to I pay didn't tax. even have to pay tax then. Oh, gotcha. But this was a long um, time ago, so I don't know if it's changed now. But I would also like to point out Canada and taxes. We have a bit of a different. Yeah, thing. that's true. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm used to paying taxes for everything. I live in California. Yeah, yeah. A uh, good place to live. Worth the taxes, I'd say. So the minimum. It, did you say the minimum wage was eight fifty in California? That's yeah. really surprising because yeah. I think that's that's about the average in North Carolina, but like the cost of living Damn. in California is like doubled. Exactly. Do you, um okay, in Alberta the minimum wage wage right now, and keep in mind the Canadian dollar I think is now slightly higher than the American. It might be a tiny bit lower too. It generally fluctuates between there. Um, minimum wage in Alberta twelve fifty. Minimum nice. wage in Toronto. Aaron in Ontario, um, sixteen dollars. Jesus. You guys want to hear the minimum wage in uh, in where's in Demas from? Australia? No, I mean like the actual Adelaide. Uh, I think he said it was like twenty twenty something dollars. But things are so expensive in Australia. Things are expensive in Canada too. But things are so yeah. expensive in Australia. The w- one yeah, really, really crazy thing about uh, PC gaming in Australia is I think developers actually put games cheaper there than we get them here. Because when he bought the Walking Dead game, not the tel- Telltale one, but the oh God. EA one. Yeah, the piece of he crap. He bought that yes. shit? Daryl and Merle. But the reason why he bought it, I think, is because it was so cheap there. It was only... The Australian dollar and the US dollar are so, like, equivalent right now. Like, uh, But it was only $20 there, as opposed to oh, 60 man. here. Um, so I, w- I actually would pay twenty dollars, even though it was probably the, one of the crappiest games I've seen in my life. I would still probably pay twenty dollars for that. By the way, though, um, a Canadian dollar is ninety-eight cents American right now. Okay, thought uh-huh. I should clarify that. So, um, actually, we have a bit of a problem in Canada with with price bumps. Um, for I'm not sure why I'm bringing this up, but if you buy a BMW in America. You can get one for like twenty one thousand. In Canada, the lowest the lowest that you can go is like thirty eight thousand. Oh wow! And it's now become illegal to actually buy a car in America and bring it to Canada. So really, there's Damn. some weird things. Yeah, That's there's odd. some weird things going on there because car companies want to make their extra eighteen thousand. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And um, the reason generally given for the price hike is that they have to do instructions in both English and French. Ew. Wow, Wait, that's which some expensive I'm, I'm sure, French. <laughs> I'm sure it costs eighteen thousand dollars per vehicle. God damn assholes. Anyway, that's actually really interesting. I I hate the I hate car. Well, I hate a lot of things when it comes to business, but I hate like car prices and and stuff like that. Yeah, something that you generally need to survive. Uh, they can charge. It's just like medical care. You know, uh, you need it. And you're going to pay out the ass for it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> which is, um, oh man, this chair suddenly turned into like the politics cast. Which is why, <laughs> even in a conservative state, I really think healthcare should be universal, at least partially. Oh, yeah. And it's, um, unfortunately in America, you have like conservative and more conservative. Your party, your party who is more liberal, is still incredibly light ring, light, right wing by all other political standards. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't. I don't pay attention to politics. I fucking hate them. They give me the <laughs> Well, I don't blame you for not paying attention to the last race, 
Um, <laughs> if if you didn't listen carefully, you might have noticed that America pretty much had a fairly good chance of becoming a theocracy. Really? Oh yeah. Um, there barely any of the politicians on the Republican side believed that there should have been a separation of church and state. So. Oh, good God. Yeah, I know. I was I was pretty terrified actually. I would move to Canada. <laughs> And uh, surprisingly enough, because of all the threats on both sides for moving to Canada, Canada tightened its border security the day of the election. Wow. Nice. Yeah, because both parties were like, if the other party wins, we're moving to Canada. And Canada's like, we don't really need a mass exodus to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I just realized? You guys not? Um, so I was on my Steam game list, and I, I looked at Brutal Legend for a second. And uh, you know how Ozzy Osbourne plays the devil or whatever in that game? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the screenshot I'm seeing of him right now looks just like Essek. Yes. <laughs> oh man. I, I I I do kind of have a metal look at times. Yeah. Occasionally. Did you guys see the uh, finished counting scars? By the way. Yes, I did. I was very impressed. Although I may take it and take my drum idea for the background and edit it in That's myself. That's totally fine. Um, see, it actually wasn't done yet, but there were two reasons why it was considered done. Uh, one, which I won't mention at the moment, uh, another, what was it? Oh yeah. I messed up my actual copy of it and I couldn't go f back far enough to, uh, fix my mistake. So I just had to go with the JPEG that I had done at the time. Eesh. Yeah, that, that sucked. That always sucks. Anyways, um, do we have another topic? Oh, that's it. That's yeah, it? That's it. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, I guess we're done then. So this week we had Solid Snake. What do you think about Metal Gear Ray? Is that, is that Ray? an actual thing? It's, it's a Metal Gear. Um, you know that there they, is they actually... fuck shit up. Sorry, I'm on the subject of Metal Gear. Let's <laughs> keep the podcast going for a tiny bit. Um, there is a new Metal Gear game in production... And um, they're oh, really? going to open world, yeah. What? Yeah. Do you get to play a Solid Snake? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm buying it. I know that sounds amazing to me. Um, for some, it was a controversial choice. To me, can you imagine an open world Metal Gear game? If they if they mix in a little bit of Snake Eater, dude, oh, it's on. Amazing. amazing. Like, can you imagine if there was like a survival mode? Don't starve with Solid Snake. That, that oh. would actually be really cool. And I want it on PC if it was. If I will buy whatever console that shit I comes mean, out on. I will on. probably buy whatever console it comes out on, but I still want it on PC. Yeah, I want that on PC. Yes, like, I think I've been talking to you too much recently. Like, occasionally I'll find, like, just these slight things, like, that I'm speaking slipping into a Canadian accent. <laughs> oh, man. That happens. That happens. Do I have Canadian accent? People I, can, tend I to cannot. Rub off well, you on you each don't other. have, like, a really yeah, you got, strong you got a Canadian, little bit accent. Of a Canadian accent. So, sorry for interrupting you, Vapid. Yeah, you better be. Yeah, we, we can't we can't tell our own accents, Canadians. No, so we can't you know, people around here would say, I don't have an accent, but everywhere else they would say you have a Californian accent. So. I didn't even know there was to a Californian honest, accent. Yep. They they might in um no Canadian would ever call you on that. We can't sure. identify American accents except for Southern. I gotcha. But, you know, Southern is super easy. It's it's a bit like yeah. Newfoundlanders, but less extreme. I'm from the South. Um, yep. Yes, and they can sometimes identify a small bit of Southern accent, just not Dang much. It. I hate that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not much. It's really, really negligible. It's like sometimes an extended N. And it's also how I yeah, can't say telltale properly. Telltale? <laughs> Otherwise, it'll Fair sound enough. like telltale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Telltale. I love how by the end of the, that interview, I managed to just say their names properly by speaking in a French accent. Yeah. Win for I, me. I was actually afraid to uh, say their names. I, I, I wasn't sure if you were able to tell, but just because I know I'd pronounce them wrong. Yeah. Like, fair I, enough. I wanted fair to try that, uh, call the other guy Boss. Just like B-O-S-S. -S. Yeah. Well, um, his, his name was kind of Boss. It was, boss. but I was... Yeah. I don't know. I, I butcher like everything. Like a boss. Oh, it's, it's the oh sound. It's kind of weird. 
Anyways, like a boss. The way he does it, the, the way Manuel described it to me, I said his name right, right? Oh damn! Does he ever look like me? Nice sending me that picture. What? Yep. <laughs> that is new avatar. You know, I actually have <laughs> those purple glasses. I have those purple glasses, the exact nice. same ones. Ah, uh, that is awesome. That's amazing. You should totally okay. cosplay as <laughs> him. Well, I wouldn't take anything. I just wear a trench coat. Purple glasses and, and done. Cross around your neck. Talking a British accent. He doesn't even talk, does he? Right, do oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he does. Yeah, you gotta talk. No, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sounding like I'm a, some sort of Western singer. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad with accents. Anyways, oh, try. Right. So this week we had Solid Snake. Which yeah. Is Vapid Games. Uh, and yes, X week. Fuck all y'all. And we will have our interview with the Reyes devs uh, <laughs> up soon. So thanks for watching and get out. Bye. See ya.